You're unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Today we're going to talk about Newton's second law and kinematics and how we can use these two different tools to solve some pretty interesting questions. Um, now let's just do a quick little kinematics review because it's been a few weeks since we've talked about these. Uh, it deals with our five friends. Remember we have our five equations and these five equations can help us solve all of our problems. Uh, to solve our kinematics problems, the first step is we write down v naught v dt in a vertical column. We fill in all of the numbers that we know, which includes adding a question mark next to the variable that we're trying to find. Then there's always going to be one variable that we don't know, so we write down the equation that we need based on what we don't have. So that's over here on, this, on the chart where it says don't need d. That's if we have everything else except for d we'll use this equation to solve. And likewise for the don't need A, don't need V, and don't need T. And then once we've written down the correct equation that we're going to use, we plug in all of our known values and we solve. So let's try a, a quick little sample problem. Let's say that a grounder, uh, a grounder is, it's a baseball that's hit on the ground and rolls the entire way. So a grounder baseball is hit and rolls 30 meters before coming to a stop. If the baseball's initial velocity was 20 meters per second, what is its acceleration? Hmm. First step, we write down v naught v dt in a vertical column. We plug in everything that we know. So the starting velocity was 20 meters per second. The ending velocity is zero since it comes to a stop. The acceleration is what we're trying to find. So we put the little question mark and the distance it traveled was 30 meters. Well, we don't need t, so we cross that off. And we identify the correct equation being the don't need t equation, since we don't have it. Then we just write down everything that we know um, and solve from there. Um, so we plug in all of our numbers. The ending velocity is 0. Starting velocity was 20 meters per second. Distance was 30. We square the 20, which gives us 400 meters squared per second squared. And we get these weird units because we've squared everything in the parentheses. 2 times 30 is 60, so we have 60 meters here. Now I'm trying to solve for A, so the 400 meters squared per second squared needs to go to the other side, so we subtract it from both sides, and then to get A all alone, we divide by 60, and that gives us a negative 6.67 meters per second squared. Negative because the acceleration is in the opposite direction that it was traveling, and so we get that. Now I blew through this pretty quickly because this is just a review, if you really have no idea what I'm talking about right now, you might want to look back at the previous videos that we've done um, to kind of get a better idea of the kinematics equations. But now, the big question is, how does this relate to Newton's second law? Well, if I write down the v naught v dt and f equals ma, you'll notice there's only one thing that they have in common, and that is acceleration. The v naught v dt does not include force and mass, and the force, the F equals MA, doesn't involve anything else except for A. So the key here is we know that when we're dealing with Newton's second law and kinematics, the first thing we really need to find is acceleration so that we can plug it into the other equation. Now let me show you what I mean. There's four steps to solving this. And it's pretty easy to remember because the four steps to solving kinematics and F equals MA is the same four steps from both of those, but put together doing it at the same time. So the first thing we do is we draw our force diagram, and then we'll write down F equals MA and the V naught V ADT at the same time. Then we'll plug in all of our known values, and like we said, we're going to solve for A first. And depending on the problem, we might use F equals MA first. If we know the force and the mass, then we'll use that to solve for acceleration so that we can plug it into the V naught V ADT. Or if we know the velocities and distances and times, we'll use that to solve for acceleration and then plug it into the F equals MA next to solve for the force. Um, let me do a couple of examples so you can see how they work. Let's say that we have a 2,000 kilogram race car that's traveling at 50 meters per second and it slams on its brakes and comes to a stop in five seconds. And I want to know what's the force that these brakes are exerting on the car. Well, the first step, we draw our force diagram. 
So we have the force of gravity pulling down on the car. We have the normal force pushing up. We have friction that's pulling us backwards and nothing else that's pulling us forward, right? It's, the car slams on the brakes, so he's not slamming on the gas anymore after that. So the second step, we write F equals MA, and we write down our five friends, the V naught V ADT. So we have those written down. Now we're halfway done. That's the good stuff. The next thing we do is we plug in all of our known values. Well, I look at my F equals MA. I don't know the force, and I don't know the acceleration, but I do know that the mass is 2,000 kilograms, so I plug that in to my mass. And then I know that my starting velocity is 50 meters per second, so I'll put that in for my V-naught. The ending velocity is zero because it says that he comes to a stop. And then the time is five seconds. So the next step that I need to do is really think about this and say, which can I solve? Well, if I look at my F equals MA, I don't know the F and I don't know the A. So I can't solve for acceleration using the F equals MA. If I look at the V naught V A D T, I realize, oh, if my A is my question mark, that just leaves D. And I can cross off the D and use my don't need D equation to solve for acceleration. Once I have the acceleration, I can plug it into A here, and then I can solve for force, which is what the question is asking. What's the force that it, that's acting on the brakes? So we're going to solve for A using the kinematics first, and then plug that into the F equals M A. I know that I need to use my don't need D equation, which from the previous slides we saw was V equals V naught plus AT. My starting velocity is 50 meters per second, so I plug that in. My ending velocity was zero. The acceleration I don't know, but the time is five seconds. Now I need to solve for A, so I need to subtract the 50 meters per second, so I have a negative 50 meters per second, is equal to A times five seconds and I divide by the 5 seconds and that gives us a negative 10 meters per second squared and that's my acceleration. Now as we just said we're not done we just use that and plug it into our F equals MA and when we do that this becomes really easy. I just say 2,000 kilograms times a negative 10 meters per second squared and we get that the force is a negative 20,000 newtons. So you see this problem isn't really any harder than any of the problems we've ever done before. It's just doing two problems at once. The first problem is solve for the acceleration. And then the next problem is just plug it in and solve for force. And that's usually the really easy part of the problem. Now let's look at another example so you can see how uh, a couple different ways that this works. Let's say that we're out launching some rockets and it's two kilograms, which would be a pretty good sized model rocket for the amateur sizes and it experiences a net force of 50 newtons upwards as it's being launched. How high will it be four seconds later when it runs out of fuel? All right, step one, we draw the force diagram. Gravity pulling down, normal force pushing up. We write down our F equals MA and the V naught V ADT. So I have my kinematic side here, my Newton second law side over there. We plug in everything that we know. We know that the starting velocity is zero because when we launch the rocket, it's not moving. We know that the time is four seconds and we know that we're solving for distance, which is the question mark. And then when we look at my F equals MA, the net force that's acting on us is 50 Newtons up and the mass is two kilograms and then times A. Now, when I look at this, I say, well, can I solve for A using kinematics? Well, this time I can't use the kinematics first because I don't know A, I don't know V, and I don't know D. So that's unsolvable. But my F equals MA, I can solve because I'm just missing the A. So to solve it, we divide by the two kilograms and we get 25 meters per second squared is our acceleration. So now all I need to do is plug that in for my acceleration. So now I know my acceleration is 25 meters per second squared. I know the V naught, I know the T, and I need D which means I don't need V. So I look at my five friends sheet. I pull out my don't need V equation, which is D equals V naught T plus one half AT squared. We plug in everything that we know. The distance is what we're trying to solve. The starting velocity is zero. So zero times T is zero. So I didn't even bother plugging in the four seconds right there. Plus one half AT squared. So we have our one half times 25 meters per second squared plus or times four seconds squared. When we multiply all these out or we, we square this one, we get the 16 seconds squared 
and then you multiply that all out, 1 half times the 25 times 16 gives us 200, and then these seconds squared cancel with those seconds squared, leaving us with just the meters. So the rocket will travel a total of 200 meters before that engine cuts out and runs out of fuel. So there's two different examples. The first example I showed you was about uh, solving the kinematics first to find a force. And in the second example, you saw, well, maybe we'll use F equals MA first and then plug it into the kinematics to solve for whatever we need to find. So it works both ways. You'll see lots of problems working both ways where sometimes you'll start with the kinematics problem and sometimes you'll start with the, the Newton's second force problem. Uh, why don't you try the uh, problems in the guided notes and see if you can solve those by yourself and then uh, come and ask me questions if you don't know how to solve those ones.